Generating AI images is fun, but if only there was a way to mix a face, a pose, and an outfit into a single image, all without having to make a fine-tuned model or any LoRa's. The initial reposer workflow did quite a good job of that. Here, the character has been transferred into a new pose using only a few basic negative prompts. And those are mostly to help keep things YouTube safe. The face, the outfit, the style, you can see them all there in the newly generated image. However, to change the character's outfit would mean updating your prompts. Here, I've asked for a blue t-shirt. Another way was to alter colours in the original face image, like in this example. Here, I've also used prompting to create her as a photorealistic character, rather than the original graphic novel style she was created in. Want to take it that one step further and make costumes or clothing easier to apply? Yes, hello and welcome to more Nerdy Rodent Geekery, where today I present the Reposer Plus workflow. This updated version now comes with a supporting image, which you can use to transfer clothing exactly like you see here. Face, plus pose, plus outfit, no prompting, no having to make a Laura, no making a custom model, just pick your images and create. Of course, you can still guide your images through prompting, it's all up to you. As I've already been through the setup for this workflow in the original Reposer video, I won't bore you and go through all that again here. Instead, this video is going to focus purely on usage, which things work, which things don't, options you may need to change to get the best results, and all sorts of things like that. As usual, this workflow is also available from the A Very Comfy Nerd webpage, which is linked in the video description. Okay, so a quick breakdown of what we're looking at here. I've done a bit of reorganization compared to the original reposer, so now all your image inputs are at the top. Below that is where you can set your prompts, the positive and the negative, as well as weights for things like your pose and input support image. And finally, at the bottom is the funky new section for segment anything. Here, you can provide additional prompts to pick out the things you want from your supporting image, as well as to remove the things you don't. This is because the supporting image uses the IP Adapter Plus image encoder, just like the one used in the various instant LoRa workflows, meaning it will see everything in the image, the pose, the face, the style, whatever object positions are in it, everything in there. Just like with the include pose option, if your supporting image has a face in, then it will merge that face in too, giving you a different look. Of course, this may be something that you're wanting to do, but either way, you should be aware of it. The same thing goes with hairstyles too. If your supporting image has long dark hair, then it can result in your final generation having long dark hair as well. This is why it's really useful to have segment anything so you can cut out things like faces or hairstyles. Segment anything automatically downloads models, making it really easy. Now, this may not be the best way of doing things, but it seems to work, so hey, you could just provide a supporting image already done perfectly in your image editor of choice, but using Segment Anything simply means you don't need another app and can do things quite quickly. Some optional bits are over to the right here, disabled by default, but there you can add a little bit of extra detail and do some upscaling. There's also a black or white background option for the segmented supporting image, which can make a difference in some cases. And that's it. In essence, as easy as one, two, three, select images, select prompts, and segment. All right, let's put it through its paces so you can see some of the different faces, poses, and outfits. To get the best results from this workflow, you'll need to pay close attention to the images you're using. Like in this example, there is a painting for the face. As you can see, he's got a red hat, a beard, and he's wearing some sort of 
coat. The pose is such that our generation should have a face, torso and some lower body visible as well, with the supporting image having a crop top and blue jeans. Checking the segment anything previews, we can see it's segmented nicely to leave only the clothing. You've got the thresholds there for segment anything and that will impact its detection rate, the setting there. Usually around 0.3 is good, but you may have to raise or lower that a little bit. If you go all the way down to zero, it will crash. If you go far too low, it will just detect everything. And if you set it too high, it may not find anything at all. If you're not getting your outfit transferred, be sure to check these previews to ensure everything is segmented okay and change the threshold and prompts to match your needs. In this case, Everything looks fine, and in the output, you'll see it's mixed all of those things. The generation has a red hat and beard. Let's have a little zoom in on there. So we've got the red hat, we've got the beard, but if you look at the outfit, you can see it's sort of a mix of the one he's wearing and the one from the supporting image. Well, at least so far as the top goes, he is wearing those jeans rather nicely. And well, that's because the face image over here doesn't actually include any leg wear. So it's making a sort of combination of the stuff that he's wearing, combining it with that, and then turning it into a new item of clothing. Keeping that same outfit, but swapping the face image to one that only includes the face and has no items of clothing means it has an easier time generating. She now has a crop top and there aren't any other clothing items to clash. If the pose you use means that your character wouldn't have the items of clothing you've provided in your supporting image, then sometimes things can get a bit weird. Like you see here, it really wants to give her that pair of jeans, but she doesn't have any legs, causing much mayhem and confusion. Tiny details don't remain consistent because, well, this is stable diffusion and it just kind of works that way. This means you'll get the best results if you don't use complex clothing designs, things with words, patterns, flowers or t-shirts with complex designs on. But of course, as you can see here, that may be something that you're looking for. Here, we're essentially doing a redesign of a jacket. So there she is, she's got the sort of orangey bits there and that's glowing. Now, if we do another prompt, there she is again in the same pose, same face, but the jacket design has changed. And of course, we can keep queuing up those prompts and giving her different jackets, all very much inspired by that supporting image, but slightly different each time due to those very complex designs. Here you can see the arm tattoo has copied across as well. So there's a sort of jaggedy pattern there and there, and they've both got a dragon t-shirt. Of course, if we do another generation, then complex things such as the tattoo and dragon have all changed there. You can see it's on a different arm and the dragon t-shirt design is different. Simple designs, on the other hand, do remain fairly consistent, such as with this top. Even if we do another random generation, then the clothing still remains fairly consistent and we can keep going. Obviously, you could find a few little changes, but for the most part, even as you keep randomly generating, she will still be wearing that same item of clothing. You can change the pose too. So let's generate another random one here, but I've got a new pose and hopefully she'll have much the same top on, fingers crossed. And there we go. Yep, so she's changed the pose, same face, different pose, but she's still got the same top. And once again in a new pose and she's still wearing that same outfit. One thing you may find with simple clothing items, however, is that you may not be able to think of prompts that work well with this segment anything exclude section. For these cases, you'll need to do something like I've done here. Bypass both of these things. So bypass the supporting image prompt and also right click and select bypass. So if I turn it on, that's how it is default and bypass group nodes will bypass those. That way the preview image, the one there where it says exclude won't be used and it will just use the positive prompt. Simple but realistic images work well as clothing items too, like in this example with a leather jacket. Once again, you can change the pose and the outfit will remain much the same.
Remember, everything from the supporting image will influence your output, even the style, such as if it's a photo, vector art, painting, or whatever. If you don't want the full level of influence, then you can lower the image strength for the support image. That will help things like vector art, items of clothing, remain a little bit more realistic, assuming your face input is a realistic one. And of course, you can always guide it by adding photorealistic style prompts into the positive prompt box. While I haven't really used any prompting here, that is indeed also another way to influence anything in your generations. So why not give it a go today and see what you can create? You could even try strange things like negative weights. Now, the stuff down at the bottom here, way, way, way down, is a little bit of a mess, and there is likely a much better way of doing this. Given that segment anything also leaves those little outlines, that kind of messes stuff up a bit sometimes, so maybe filling these sections with noise would give better results. Who knows? Either way, download it now from the A Very Comfy Nerd website, the link for which can be found in the video description. Have a play and see if you can improve it any. Or you could just watch another nerdy rodent video instead.